listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. It is Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Whoa, Christmas. Ho, ho. <laughs> It's Christmas 2020, so I'm sure this doesn't look anything like you thought Christmas was going to look like, I don't know, a year ago or something, which means we're actually re-gifting the episode that we did last year. <laughs> we're giving it to you again, partially because, and I am pr- I think we said this on this episode last year, I'm not sure we're ever going to one-up that episode for Christmas. It was fantastic. It's a good so one. We're, we're giving it to you again. It is a poetry slam it is amazing. I also listened to it the other day, and our episodes have changed quite a bit since a year ago. Also, we were all in studio together, and I remember laughing so hard that I was crying. So, Well, we were all in studio together for that one. That is oh, true. Yeah. yeah, but most Rachel. of were. I, you know, <laughs> you know what I want for Christmas 2020? I want Christmas 2019 back, you guys. <laughs> that was a good Ooh. Christmas. <laughs> it was a good one. Before, ah, oh, remember when COVID was just a twinkle in the world's eye? Yeah. And not everywhere yep. all the time. Mm. Yeah. I do. I remember that. So we're going to time travel back to then, right, Sarah? We are time traveling back to Christmas 2019 when we gave you what will probably always be our best Christmas episode, our only real Christmas episode until maybe we do one next year. We'll see. We'll see what 2021 brings, but 2021 is going to have to earn a Christmas episode from us (laughs) because 2020 sure has not. (laughs) We do something twice and it becomes a tradition. Exactly. Uh, Why mess with greatness though? It's true. It's true. So without further ado, we present to you the Christmas Poetry Slam from 2019. Here we go. You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. And it's time for a Christmas poetry slam. Oh, angst and screech and yes. This is a super... I'm snapping my fingers now. <laughs> You're not my real dad. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. This is a super special edition of the Lutheran Ladies Lounge because this may be the only time we do it depending on how well it goes. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Um, it's so, our Christmas gift from us to you. Right. You're welcome. Poetry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no exchanges, no refunds. <laughs> no regifting. <laughs> no regifting. <laughs> Although, please share this with your friends. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, it will be good enough mm-hmm. to yeah, share yeah. with your friends. Um, this this was born out of um, the the creative brain of, of Aaron, who had a poem and said, hey, let's do a poetry slam. I think yeah. that's how that went. In Something our, pretty much like pretty that. Pretty much yeah. like that in our meeting. So the rest of us um, either had poetry or wrote new poetry to share with you all today on this podcast. Um, so we'll see how this goes. And I think, Erin, you're going to kick us off here. I am. All right. Tell us about your poem or just so start into it. My poem is inspired by one of my my all-time favorite Christmas books slash specials. Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. It's my favorite, too. Yeah, It's a good one. I love the Grinch. so good. I have a whole lot of it Not memorized. Not a Grinch fan. I love the Grinch. Oh, I love oh, the Grinch. Rachel. <sighs> Rachel is the Grinch. I know. I am the Grinch for not loving the wow. Grinch. <laughs> wow. So... I love the who's and who of you. Uh, <laughs> what do you think, Aaron? Uh, Just go with it. I just like roast yes. beast. Oh, mm. roast beast. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I... you There's there's no mistaking it. Um, but I had fun. It was one of those where I like had the idea that I mulled over for actually a few years uh, before I finally was like, I need to actually just figure this out. Like I would keep getting random lines of it. And I finally decided to, to sit down and, and string it all together. Oh so here we go. All the who's down in Whoville liked sinning a lot. But the Lord who created Whoville did not. The Lord hated sinning, and death was the reason. It began at the beginning with a terrible treason. The Lord made a garden and filled it with treasure. Everything in it gave him great pleasure. Then he said, It's all yours except for this one. 
If you eat it, you you'll die, which will not be fun. The Who's cheered, yippee, and started to play. Everything was just grand till that terrible day when the devil came in and he tempted and lied. The Who's ate the forbidden, and right then they died. The Lord knew what had happened, but he asked anyway. Fingers were pointed at one and all on that day. The curse was spoken, death would begin. But the Lord loved the Who's and would not let death win. It's true, death had entered and ravaged their lives. Sin was an addiction they couldn't survive. And as sin and death spread like filth in a sewer, the Lord loved the Who's and said, I must make a cure. Then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Lord got a wonderful, awful idea. All I need is a sacrifice. The Lord looked around, but since sacrifices are rare, there was none to be found. Did that stop our dear Lord? No, the Lord simply said, if I can't find a sacrifice, I'll be one instead. So he named his son Jesus because he will save his people from sin and death and the grave. And what happened then? Well, on the third day, the tomb it was opened and death Christ did slay. The word that created all things, light and life, had triumphed or Satan in the terrible strife. And he bought back their lives from greatest to least. And he, he himself, Jesus was their feast. The end. <laughs> that was so good. Uh, isn't, wow. that, isn't that beautiful? I think that I think that's right the episode the right there. <laughs> right. We that's know. It. Yeah. Wow. Uh, isn't that awesome? That was amazing, Erin. Thank you. <gasps> Nicely done. Mine feels Thank so you. flippant after that. <laughs> Stop That's, it. That's right. Stop Dr. It. Seuss would be proud. Actually, not so proud. Dr. <laughs> Seuss is not a very Christian man. Yeah, yeah, we'll, he would we'll, demand we'll, royalties. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Dr. Seuss is amazing. Probably one of my favorite children's authors, yeah. too. And, yeah, The Grinch. Wasn't that so lovely? It was so good. Probably don't often find a rhyme for sewer with cure. I, that but I decided. Okay. I feel like you have to have a special kind of accent to really pull that off. But hey, good job. Were. Hey. You were. Go with it. Run with it. I love That's it. That's right. Let's do this. Okay. That's right. All right. I think y'all elected me to go yeah. second. Yeah, you're going to go do second. It. Okay. It's going to be great. Okay. I so this, um, this poem actually came uh, from my husband, Luther. He... I was telling him, I was lamenting that I was having a hard time coming up with something good to write about. Um, I started a couple of poems and didn't finish either of them because I was bored with them. And I was lamenting. And he said, why don't you just write about him nerdery? Hmm. Luther! <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, that might work, maybe. I'll we'll uh-huh. see what I can come up with. Um, and so what came out of that is an ode to Christmas hymns. All of them. Yes. In typical hashtag him nerdery form. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is much longer than it was meant to be. Also in him nerdery form. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, here we go. We've reached the time of year when kind folk with good voices, or at least those who love to sing, pick up their hymnals and carol books and dash from one place to another, singing Christmas cheer even if it's still Advent, but we won't talk about that. (laughs) The joy to the worlds and angels we have heard on highs and O little town of Bethlehem's float through the air. But this year, it's my turn. It's my turn to pick the carols. (laughs) That's right, they've chosen the hymn nerd to pick the favorites. Do they know that's nearly impossible? It's like a kid picking just one candy in the candy store. How do you pick just ten to sing over and over at each new place? And what about the Advent hymns? Since that's really the season we're in, but that's another soapbox for another poem. 
So I pull out my hymnal and I leaf through the pages, not to mention the English carol book with all of the rest of the favorites. (laughs) We'll need a 10-part carol episode by the time I'm done. As an aside, I may not always love English hymns, sorry not sorry, but the English certainly know how to sing Christmas carols. Ten. I must pick ten from the 63 Advent and Christmas hymns in the hymnal. Do I choose by the tune or the text or the harmony? What about the date or the author or the composer? Oh, Lord, how shall I meet you? Oh, wait. That would be a great one. (laughs) Read by Paul Gerhardt and all. Mark that as number one. No one will mind the seven stanzas, will they? Nine more. I can do this. Ray Fun Williams needs to make an appearance, of course. The glorious Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending will do it. It's beautiful. It's soaring with luscious text. Mark that as number two. I'm not going to make it to Christmas at this rate. (laughs) Comfort, comfort ye, my people, must be another. How many hymns do we still get to sing ye? It's a French tune, too, so there's that. Mark that as number three. We must dance to one and hear about Mary and Gabriel. The angel Gabriel from heaven came is just the one. I mean, wings of snow and eyes of flame. Mark that as number four. Okay, just one more Advent hymn because we can't not sing it. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel is the perfect bridge. It's ancient, and the O antiphons mark beautifully the names of the coming Christ. Mark that as number five. I made it to Christmas hymns, but I only get five more. Hold on to your hats, folks. Wait. (laughs) Time out. Five more? There's no way I can pick five from the 34 Christmas hymns. I might have to throw Mm. in a few extra and see if anyone notices. Here goes. No one will mind singing 15 stanzas, will they? It's Martin Luther's classic Christmas hymn, so we'll power through. From heaven above to earth I come. Could just finish out the rest of the day, but we'll keep going. Mark that as number six. Lo, how a rose air blooming must be next. Have you sung the harmony on this one? Mark that as number seven. Paul Gerhardt makes a lot of appearances in the Christmas section, and this is one of my favorite Christmas hymns. Yeah, I said it. All My Heart Again Rejoices is next. Mark that as number mm. eight. The debate over which tune to sing A Little Town of Bethlehem to will not make an appearance on my list. We'll sing the tune Forest, but the text will be Stephen Starkey's O Sing of Christ. Actually, this might be my favorite Christmas hymn. It's Starkey plus Vaughn Williams <laughs> plus Lots of Jesus, the trifecta. Mark that as number nine. <laughs> There's no way this list will only be 10. (laughs) Because Silent Night has to be next. Sing it with candles, y'all. Mark that as number 10. Uh Uh-oh. There's more. I failed at only picking 10. There's just no way. I must keep going. Do you know Isaiah would be there? The imagery from Yaroslav Vida has to make the list. Where shepherds lately knelt is just the one. Mark that as number 10 plus (laughs) 1. Another ball, Paul Gerhardt. Maybe I should just have picked 10 Gerhards? Oh, Jesus Christ, thy manger is, must be on the list. My soul reclines at the paradise that is Christ's manger. Mark that as 10 plus 2. Once in Royal David City is a classic. We'll need to wrangle someone to sing the solo first verse. Hmm. Mark that as 10 plus 3. If you're a Bach fan, you have to sing Break Forth, O Beauteous Heavenly Light. Mark that as 10 plus 4. They're never going to ask me to do this again. <laughs> oh, come all ye faithful. 10 plus 5. Hark the herald angels sing. 10 plus 6. We praise you, Jesus, at your birth. Wonderful Martin Luther text. 10 plus 7. A great and mighty wonder. 10 plus 8. Of course, of the Father's love begotten. Have to have some good chant. 10 plus 9. Now sing, we now rejoice. 10 plus 10. And... Finally, I made it to the end. Joy to the world! 10 plus 11. I should have known I couldn't pick just 10. 21 is fine too, right? Let's go caroling, y'all. Clear your calendars. Bring your hymnals. Bring your voices. Bring snacks. We're just going to sing all of them. Carol Palooza! <laughs> The end. Uh, <laughs> that was hilarious. Is that what is that what you're like? Is that what how your brain processes all the time? <laughs> yep. I would. Lo- I want your brain. <laughs> That's literally my thought That's process. Amazing. Picking hymns.
You're welcome. That's good. You're welcome. <laughs> That's that delightful. was good. There are some in there that I am not familiar with. <gasps> we I need know. to sing them all. That's quite the dilemma, though. You're absolutely right. <laughs> There's so many. There are some in there that I'm not as big a fan of as you are. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was. I it's a good thing that yes. people couldn't see my face. Uh-huh. Um, because, like, 19 out of 21, I was just cheering, and two of them, my face fell. Like, uh-huh. really? Which one? I won't say which two. Oh, no, nope, not okay. going to say. Oh, I'm lady curious, never tells. Though. You're a peacemaker. Right, fine. <laughs> Even when we're mixing down, you can tell Peacekeeper. Us. You're it's a peacekeeper, true. not a maker. Peacekeeper. All right. My, my hymn nerdery is done. That was funny. <laughs> that was so fun. I, was I got so into my hymnal while I was writing that. <laughs> <laughs> I was so frustrated at one point because I was only halfway through and I wanted the poem to be done and it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes desperation is our greatest motivator. <laughs> All right, Bree, it's your turn. All right, I'm going to bring it back into the realm of rhyme and verse with a, <laughs> with a limerick, but... I like to put some respect on it, on the name, so it's Alima Richard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, a Christmas, it's a Christmas story, Alima Richard. I wondered how it got that name. Alima it's really Richard. funny. <laughs> there once was a man from Judea who could build you a boat if you needed. And when to his surprise, his betrothed was with child. He'd give Mary a dignified, see ya. When Joseph lied down for a snooze, an angel appeared with good news. Do not fear for your life. Take this girl as your wife. She's bearing the king of the Jews. (laughs) So Joseph awoke from his dream and took Mary to be on his team. Then came a dictation, the whole world's registration, a ruling from Caesar Supreme. I just like to point out right here, Caesar Supreme sounds like a pizza. (laughs) So hungry. (laughs) Joseph was a follower of rules, so he hoisted his wife on a mule. (laughs) They would not be dissuaded from the city of David, though the journey was not minuscule. In Bethlehem, the pair had arrived with what seemed every person alive. Much to their chagrin, there's no room in the inn, so surely they would improvise. The innkeeper said, I am able to put you both up in a stable. It's not really fancy, but you don't have a plan C, and anything less is unstable. (laughs) Get it? LOL. (laughs) The place was abundantly clear, and the time, it was growing near. For Mary to labor the birth of our Savior, Messiah was finally here. There once was a man from creation who was sent to redeem every nation. Through his death on a cross, sin and Satan have lost, and through this man we have salvation. So this Christmas let us reflect on Christ's birth and his life with respect to God's love for us, He saved us, and thus, the gospel we spread with effect. Yay! Yay! That was delightful. That was wonderful. Thanks, Brie. That was my first Limmer Richard. Limmer Richard. (laughs) Richard. Of the the genre. Hashtag iconic. (laughs) Hashtag stay mad if you don't like the limerick. That's a long hashtag. (laughs) Whatever. It's whatever. (laughs) All right. I think that brings us... Bring us home, Rachel. To Rachel. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to slam it. Slam oh, it! Hashtag, Hashtag slam actually, it! <laughs> I did not write a new poem for this um, because I had some that I was just dying to share. A couple of years ago, as sometimes happens in a small church, our um, kids wound up being the entire Christmas pageant. <laughs> oh. Cast? <laughs> and yes. so I said... I, so I ran with it and said, okay, guys... We can do the Christmas play however we want. And we had all been listening to a bunch of Hamilton around that time. Oh, no. So <laughs> so that might have been a key inspiration behind the, the program we came up with. The other thing was that my son um, said, Mom, I want to play Gabriel. Mm-hmm. Now, if you know uh, anything about Christmas pageants, you know that Gabriel is 
almost never played by a boy, even though he's a, a he <laughs> a dude in the scripture, because there are so few roles that can be ladies. Mm, that's true for for the little ladies that usually and and most boys don't actually want to play an angel because anyway. So <laughs> I said, okay, I will cast you as Gabriel. Mm-hmm. We will put you in a white robe. We will give you a sword. And we will write the play accordingly. (laughs) And so the entire play ended up being called The Thing About Angels. And that also was one of the early poems in the play, which I'm going to read to you. And I actually have a couple more. So if you decide you want to hear more from this uh, unpublished uh, Christmas musical, we we can go there. However, if you if you don't, that's okay. maybe I feel like we'll be going there. I feel like we can release <laughs> a short. <laughs> a sh- oh yes, All the right. extended. So anyway, <laughs> but this one this one goes out to my son who had the guts to say, "I want to play the angel of the Lord in the Christmas play." So, the thing about angels. Oh oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> I need some help for this because this was a play. I need. Mm. You know how the Bible says that they were sore afraid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, who wants to be sore afraid for me? Me. Yeah. I, I, I okay, Brie. Brie. I feel like that's where it was <laughs> going. All right. <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah, you, you do got the moxie to play sore afraid. So um, <laughs> you, you are going to be Mary, sore afraid. Okay. And when I point to you, make the appropriate sound effect. Okay? <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. What could go wrong? Okay. The thing about angels is we aren't what you think. We're not at all dainty, and we never wear pink. We are warriors of heaven, mighty messengers of God, and fear not is something we've got to say a whole lot. I'm more the kind of guy who wears a flaming sword than white lace, and my wings aren't just to fly the area of my face. There's nothing cute or cherubic about me, quite the contrary. Try absolutely blindingly, mind-numbingly out of the ordinary. I hate to have to say it, folks, but hear this. I'm scary. Oh, wait a sec. I got to go see Mary. Hail, Mary. <laughs> hey, hey, ho. We, hang on. <laughs> I, I didn't realize you were just going to. Let's okay. start that Arr. verse over. I hate to have to say it, folks, but hear this. I'm scary. Oh, wait. Hang on a sec. I got to go see Mary. Hail, Mary. <laughs> Fear not. <laughs> so that was that was. <laughs> I wanted to try and capture what seems to happen every time someone actually encounters an angel of the Lord in Scripture, and that is they totally uh, are terrified. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's um, what I do when I, I'm like, Meh! wings of snow and eyes of flame. <laughs> right? Yeah. So that was my small son. At the time, he was small. Now he's bigger than me. Um, enjoyed that poem quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, I can see why. It's a good one. Do you have more? Give us one more. I do. Give us one. Give I us do. one for do the road. It. Yeah. It. Okay. All right. I'll go right to the end. <laughs> Another key character in this play, by the way, is Joseph, who, if you listen to the Christmas pageant episode, you'll know is possibly one of my favorite characters in the Christmas pageant. A good dude. A good dude. He was a good dude. So in this play, Joseph took out took us out at the very end with the final final poem um, that sort of echoes a poem he had earlier called "Not What I Signed Up For." <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so he then reprises this poem with "This is what our God signed up for." He came to this world as a tiny child. His neck weak and floppy, his cry loud and wild. Incontinent, helpless, completely dependent, swaddled in diapers, his power suspended. A king without glory, crown, throne, or attendant. And this, this is what, this is what our God signed up for. Here it's squalid, it's dusty, it's violent. Why must he have chosen this time and this place to get stuck? See, the Romans are ruthless. The king wants to slay him. We've got to skip town if we're going to save him. He could have stayed in heaven and skipped all the struggle, left us all to die in the muck and the rubble. He must love us madly to go to all this trouble. 
Because this, this is what. This is what our God signed up for. This is what our God signed up for. Oh, I love that one. That was awesome. Those are so good. Yes. Thanks, so, Rachel. Anyway, that was that was my poem. Yeah. Uh, not new. But Y'all are ridiculously I'm talented. <laughs> if you haven't gathered, we are creative geniuses. And you're all welcome. Well, if you have poems, uh, those of you in Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast land, if you have Christmas poems, and I know some of you are actually like authors, real authors of real poems, um, Lisa yeah, Clark, <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, share them with us, post them to the page, maybe do some dramatic readings and uh, yeah, yeah, post yeah, yeah, them as yeah. videos. Totally It'd be super fun. Video yourself being part of our virtual poetry slam. <laughs> That'd be super We would fun. love to hear that. Virtual poetry slam. Please do it. Um, and I know a lot of you are also super creative with words, as has been proven more than once in the comment sections. <laughs> so share your own creative works with us we'd love to see them so ladies i hope you enjoyed our christmas poetry slam i hope you had some christmas spirit in your heart i don't know maybe you laughed maybe you cried we're looking forward to celebrating with our families on this christmas day I want to wish everyone a happy Merry Christmas from my humble home, from my husband and I, and are are celebrating our Savior's birth because this may be a year when we really realize that Christmas is about Christ. Aww. So I have thought a lot this year about, there's been a lot of parallels between the time that I was in Japan just because there were so many things that were different and unexpected. And I remember Christmases in Japan being <laughs> different and they felt, they felt different, but what remained the same was the, the corny true meaning of Christmas. Uh, and, <laughs> and, you know, you had to strip away the usual traditions and traditions are great and they're wonderful, but they aren't actually what makes Christmas amazing. What makes Christmas amazing is that Jesus came and we get to celebrate that. And that that remains true throughout time and space. And we get brought together as the body of Christ, even though we are far apart from each other hmm. in many times. So I hope that everyone is able to to feel to feel that and and meditate on that today even if your usual traditions feel different or lacking Jesus isn't lacking so merry christmas merry christmas our pastor asked us in church recently if if we had a favorite version of the christmas story you know do you like matthew's version with the wise men or luke's version with the angels or Mark's version where you just go straight into the desert with the locusts and honey. (laughs) John's version. I joked to my husband, I like the Revelation version with the dragon. Yes. But I want to share (laughs) the version of the nativity story that means the most to me this year. And I learned it when I was a child from an arch book of all places. Thanks to PH for those. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness on them has light shone. That's the Christmas story right there. Mm. For all of humanity's history, we've been in darkness. And then on the people who walked in darkness, light has shone. Christ is born. Christ lives for us. And we live in his light. So may you always, even in the darkest times, continue to live as people on whom light has shone. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. All right, Brie. Christmas. So with social distancing and the weirdness of COVID-19, there's no way that anything that I say or do could possibly make up for that. But I hope this song makes you feel at least a little okay about (laughs) Christmas. In 2020. Yes. 
This is off the top of the old melon, actually. You all thought I wrote a song, but I didn't. <laughs> you said so you wrote probably, a song. You fooled me. This is, this is a Peter's <laughs> Elfsky original. You're probably going to have to edit most of it. But I don't edit any of your songs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> la, 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 la. Okay. When I think about my favorite things, which isn't actually a Christmas song, Christmas is still one of the things at the top of that list. Christmas is a special time. It's a time for family. And it's a time for saying happy birthday, Jesus. And eating cookies and ham. <laughs> I'm going to hang my stocking on the tree because I don't have a fireplace. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jesus. From all of the children who love you. And I hope you get everything you want. Uh, Happy birthday, Jesus. Merry Christmas. From the Gurzevsky house is Matt and Bree and Tuber going on adventures and loving life and celebrating Christmas with you at least six feet away with a mask <laughs> on. Happy birthday, Jesus. <laughs> I feel like that was an audio version of one of your Christmas cards. That was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh. And bringing it back home, I want to share the collect of the day because you know I'm pulling out my liturgy book right now. That's the collect right. of the day for the Nativity of Our Lord Christmas Midnight, which has already passed. But this is my mm, one of my two favorite collects of the whole year. Careful. <laughs> this one and Easter Vigil are my two favorites. That's I fair. think I'm safe. I'm safe to say that. I'm pretty sure. So this is the collect of the day for Christmas Midnight. O oh God, you make this most holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that as we have known the mysteries of that light on earth, we may also come to the fullness of his joys in heaven through the same Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 All right, ladies. Merry Christmas from all of us in the Lutheran Ladies Lounge. We're going to have more content in 2021. We have so much fun putting this podcast together. <laughs> Don't raise that bar too high, Sarah. I know. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll bring it back down a little. We have some great <laughs> stuff planned, though, for January. I'm looking forward to sharing all of that with you in the new year. Find all of us in the Lutheran Ladies Lounge group on Facebook. Find all of our podcasts at kfuo.org slash Lutheran Ladies Lounge or on your favorite podcasting app. Merry Christmas, y'all! Yes! Merry Christmas! You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm ready for 2021. I I'm scared of 2021. <laughs> I'll be and on I'm Rachel. <laughs> It'll be good. We got each Stay other and time. Jesus. Views and opinions expressed on the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge podcast may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO Radio, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. The Lutheran Ladies' Lounge is produced by KFUO Radio and available at kfuo.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Join our community on Facebook in the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge. If the episode needs more beef, I love I've beef. I've got some more. Mm. Oh, yes. <laughs> beef. <laughs>